Hi, welcome back. Today I thought I'd answer a question I quite often am asked when I'm in class teaching. Students often want to know which order to actually do their piece of work in. Now, this is my personal opinion. I always put my gold lever into my design first. I just find it easier to do it that way. It means that I can get all of that out of the way because it's quite fiddly to cut all the little bits of fell and to put them into the position and then to apply the gold lever over the top of them. But once I've done that, that's a mammoth task done. And I always feel then from there on, from that point, I can get creative. I then do my couching and I quite like to know what I'm actually going to stitch. So I will couch in my entire design so that I can see it. And then once I've done that, I've also by that stage, I've gone around the edge of my gold lever as well, if it needs to be neatened. And I'm now ready to play an infill. And that's how I like to design my gold work projects. I do the lever work first. I then couch the design and then basically I play at what I'm going to infill with. But you can't really apply leather after you've done your couching unless you're incredibly careful. And sometimes it can get a little bit sort of like, you know, it doesn't quite work because you can see you've applied it afterwards. That's just my personal opinion. I'm sure there are other ways of doing it, but I thought I'd just show you the way I do it. So let me come back in a moment with all my stuff prepped and I'll show you what I do. See you in a minute. Bye. So here I've got a nice simple design and I've used a rounded cord which I've outlined the design with and then using some metallic gold thread I've done some little detail stitches in, added a few sequins and beads and you've got a very nice simple fairly quick to do gold work design done there. That would be ideal to go on a greetings card or you could use it to go on a box top. Or if you made several of them, you could put them and make an entire box with that as the design that goes around them. So what sort of things do you use to couch? Well, you could use anything to couch. In embroidery, we couch all sorts of threads, wool, yarns, anything that you can take a thread over the top of it and secure it to the background. But in gold work, we have some special supplies which we tend to use. Um, and here's some, I've got, I've got some here for you now. This one is, um, it says it's a very fine braid, metallic gold. Had it some years, but it's really nice for couching, very nice for doing sort of filigree work. Um, and it, it, you know, it takes a bit of practice to use it, but with a little bit of time and effort, you could use a silk thread over that and you'd be able to get some really fine uh, filigree work done with that. You've got things like, um, I think this is a, a Grecian, Grecian type um, braid. I picked it up in India when I was traveling over there recently. And of course, all things gold are things that go in my bag and then they get added to my gold work collection. That would look really nice as an edging on something. So that's a good one. There's also your traditional Jap, which is quite hard to use. And this one can really sort of, you know, get you quite uptight if you're stitching this. It does take practice, but it comes. The more gold work you do, the better you get at things. You go back to them several months later and you think, why was that a problem? It's like the information has sunk in and you're now ready and able to deal with it. You could use these bobbly yarns. These come on a roll and you can buy those. And because each bobble's got a little gap in between, perfect for couching. And they'd give you a lovely edging if you were making something like a Christmas decoration or needed an edging to go around something else. I like to use the twists. So this is a free ply twist and they do come in lots of different colors. So this makes it really interesting when you're doing your gold work. There's a nice golden copper one there. We've got the lavender and we've got mixtures here. Very nice to use. But my most favorites to use with my gold work are these T69, 70 and 71 um, cords. These are really nice to use singly or you can lay them next to each other and you can apply them in rows of two threads. 
that's really nice too. Sorry, that's the dog just going off. Someone's rang the doorbell. I'll be back in a minute. Right, doorbell answered and we're back again. So this is definitely by far the cord that I use the most of. And this is a cord which comes in a big hank that I get from India. And I've been using it for years. It's really, really easy to use. You don't split it. Um, it's nice and rounded. It's firm. You can get a nice bend in it. It's good for doing corners. And I use this most times, if not all the time, to do all the outlining and couching in all my gold work projects. And then I add in all these other things to infill the design. So I'm going to set up to show you how to do some couching. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to go back to the uh, design I was using in the past video where we learned how to apply the leather. And I'd like to show you how to couch the cord around this piece of leather to neaten this leaf and also how to go about doing the rest of this flower. So I'm going to work with the cord that I get from India because as I said earlier I really like that one. Um, I've got a bit of a sort of horrible end here so I'm just going to cut that piece off so it's nice and neat. Now don't cut your cord into pieces. Keep it as a long piece because that way you don't waste any. We can cut it as we need it, as we sew. Now we need to get this through to the back of our work. So the easiest way to do that is to pick up a needle with a large eye, push the cord through, and then you go to your starting place where you're gonna to start to um, apply the cord. Now looking at my design here, where do I start? Where do I wanna start my couching? Well, you might decide you're gonna start there and couch around your leaf and stop there. But if you look at it and you think about it, you get more stitching and a longer run if we start down here at the bottom and couch all the way up to that point there, at the bottom of the leaf, and then go round, come back down the other side of the leaf, and then we will finish there and we will angle our finishing off under the cord that's already gone up there. So to get your cord through to the back, pick your work up, Take your needle with your thread through it and pop it through to the back. Now you do not want to, you want to pull that end close to the eye of the needle because we don't want to struggle pulling that through. Give it a pull and it goes through. Now you can see there's quite a large hole here. So what I do is I just get the back of my needle and I rub the underneath and I rub the top just so that I get the fibers, the threads and fibers to settle back down again so you don't get a big hole. Now. The idea is not to pull it now because it is now sitting through the back and we've got about a centimetre through the back. You'll need a needle and thread. So I've got my needle and thread here, a small knot in the back and don't work with too long a length because otherwise it will just keep getting into a mess. Now, the idea is not to pull it, as I said. So I'm going to put my thumb on it. I'm going to move it to the side and I'm going to find the line which is drawn or marked underneath. I'm going to come up. I'm going to rock the thread back to the other side so that I can see where I, my, my thread has come up before. And I'm going to go down virtually in the same hole. So I've made a loop and when I pull that loop, it will pull the cord directly on top of that line. So swing it to the side again, come up on the line and move along about two millimeters, rock the cord to the other side so you can see where you're going and put the loop over. And you keep going like that. And you do get quite quick at it. Whoops. You don't pull the needle out while you're going. And you just take your time. It's supposed to be very therapeutic. I actually enjoy couching. I find it very relaxing. Some people find it stressful, but it's very, very simple. It just looks so fetching and so wonderful because you're using all these lovely gold cords. Keep an eye on where you're going. I'm working my way towards the bottom of that gold leaf. Now, one thing to remember is don't try and be too quick and get your stitches that are holding your couch in too far apart 
because don't forget this is under tension in this embroidery hoop and if you kind of get a little carried away and think I can whip along there and I can you know I don't have to do every two three millimeters I can do sort of like half a centimeter all that will happen is when you take this out of the hoop what was a straight line will be a wobbly line so keep going like that until you approach the bottom of your leaf my thread is disappearing off my needle so let's pull that down a bit keep going rock it out the way and you get there quite quickly and you do get into the habit with your thumb of rocking from side to side and just keep going and go right up to the bottom of your leaf now at that point i put my stitch in and then i hold it underneath wrap it around my finger and i just give this thread sort of a, a bend almost like i'm putting a memory in it and then I rock it out of the way, I come up on the edge of the lever, not through the lever, on the edge, and over and back down so that I am pulling that cord right up close against the lever. And this will neaten it until you get practiced enough that you can put a piece of lever on that doesn't need to have a gold edging. But I like the gold edging. So, you know, even if I do manage to get that on there and it's absolutely beautiful, I still like to put a nice gold cord edge all the way around it because it just makes it look so nice. It's, and it's a different texture and it catches the light in a different way and it just adds to it. And, you know, I, you know it's up to you. Nothing's right or wrong um especially if you're doing sort of contemporary work because you're out there to push the boundary so experiment try some with a gold edge and some without the gold cord edge so you just keep going ouch that was me underneath try not to put it through your finger and you can see that's looking really nice so just bear with me until i get to the top of the leaf whoops your fingers do actually get into quite a routine of moving especially this thumb that's on top of the work here it's doing a lot for me it's moving that cord backwards and forwards so that i can stitch without having to really stop too much now i've got my thread caught oh there we go now, when I get to the corner, this point, it's not a corner, it's a point. I'm going to do two stitches on that point. I'm trying not to get my threads all caught up. This is what happens when you do gardening in the morning and then try and do hand embroidery in the afternoon. I've got what they call rough fingers from gardening. There's my second stitch going in. Now, I'm going to give that a good tug. I'm going to turn over to the back. And I'm going to do two little stitches in my backing fabric. And this is because I want to hold that point so that it doesn't come away when I try to go round. Because I want to pull that now. Pull that cord so that it will come round onto the other side of the leaf. And back down we go again. Sometimes you do catch a little bit of the leather, so don't worry too much. So I've sewn my cord all the way down and I'm just coming up to the bottom of the leaf again. And I've got my stitch already in, but I don't want to finish the stitch because I actually want to sink this cord through neatly to finish the bottom of the leaf. So I take my scissors and I'm allowing about an inch and a half, maybe an inch of the cord to remain. I've cut it and now I'm going to take my large eye needle and I'm going to pop it in right at the base of the leaf at a slight angle so that it sort of goes under the edge of the cord that's already applied. Now push the needle all the way down. Don't try and do this with the needle up in the air. The eye needs to come right down so that it's virtually almost going through the fabric and then I can balance the hoop on my hand underneath pick up 
the cord, pop it through the eye of the needle. Let me get it in my fingers properly. There we go. And then you can give that a tug. It disappears through. I stroke the fibres underneath to close the hole. And then you just finish off the stitch by going over the top. And that finishes your leaf and you've couched in your first row here and gone all the way around the edge and that looks lovely so now you can see i've put one lot of couching on for the petals over here so i need to start again now the thing that people try to do is they try to not stop start and stop with a flower like this, you need to, otherwise it looks clumsy. So I have actually couched that cord round there and finished it, sunk it back through to the back of the fabric again. So now I need to sink again, and I'm gonna start there, and, and then I'm gonna couch all the way around and sink it back there. Sometimes a design is big enough that you can actually come back on yourself, and you can keep going all in one go all the way round those petals but I like to do my petals individually so this is the one I'm going to couch in next and I'm going to sink it there then I will sink again there and couch round and sink back there sink there so round and sink and so on until they're all done and then lastly I will put the middle in because the middle couching cord will neaten up all of that leather and it will also hide all of these little ends here where you've stopped and started. So again, I'm going to pop the cord through the eye of the needle. Take the needle and I'm going to go in again at a 45 degree angle. So it just pulls this cord under the edge of the one that's already couched. Give it a tug and through it goes. Pop my needle back down there and then get myself organised, find my needle and thread and I'm going to start to couch that cord down as well, rocking side to side again so I can see where I'm going. Now, when you're just starting out, oh, needles come undone. Always happens, doesn't it? Where's my thread gone? These are the little, the little ends that we've put through to the back. And in theory, they should be secured to the backing fabric with some little stitches to hold them in place. But when I'm doing small pieces like this, I don't always secure those little ends at the back because there's going to be no movement on this piece it's purely decorative it's either going to go on a card or it's going to become um, a picture but if I was making a piece of ecclesiastical work or I was making something that was going to be worn every time you sink your cord through to the back whether you're starting or finishing you must secure those ends at the back in the backing fabric otherwise over a period of time with movement they are going to wriggle free and they're going to work their way back out onto the top of your fabric and you don't want that so rule of thumb if i'm doing small pieces that are not going to have any movement on them pictures etc i don't always secure my tail ends in the backing fabric but when you're doing clothing or things that are going to move curtains drapes then you must secure your ends at the back. And remember to turn your work round as well. The amount of people that look really awkward when they're stitching because they don't turn their work round. And again, we're coming round the bend. So on the bend of this petal, and I've just pulled my thread out for the second time, <laughs> gardening fingers, driving me potty today. I think I might have to go and find some moisturiser. But you get the gist of what's going to happen. This is going to come round and it's going to be sunk back through to the back of the fabric there. And then we will start again and come round to the next one. 
So now for the middle section, I've gone all the way around all those petals, all looking lovely. So now all I've got to do is neaten that little bit in the middle where the lever is. You go all the way around your circular piece of lever. And when you get back to the beginning, you sink the end through and you'll have a nice, neat edge. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Now you have an insight as to how I go about starting off on a new adventure with one of my pieces of gold work. If you'd like some inspiration, nip over to my website shop at www.kathleenlaurelsage.co.uk and check out the kits that are available for you to purchase from beginners to intermediate to advanced. And if you'd like a little book to have a go at some projects, there's also my book available on there as well. Well, I hope to see you again soon. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll be back with you very soon. Bye.